Good evening to all of you. I welcome you all once again to affirm IMPW celebrations. Now I hand over to Professor Arun Jogle to welcome you all and introduce our today's moderator and speaker. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon and good evening to all of you. Uh, accept my greetings on the occasion of International Medical Physics Week, which is being celebrated from 11 to 15th of 2000. Uh, President of the IOMP, Professor Madan Rehani, has also asked me to convey his greeting. So kindly accept greetings from Professor Rehani on this occasion. AFOM has planned two webinars on this occasion. One was held on 11th on a topic of clinical trial medical physicist, how to empower and this. Second webinar is on the topic of nurturing the next generation medical leaders. And this topic is a very, very important topic. And uh, the talk will be given by Professor Kwon Hung Enji, whom today's moderator, Professor Iwa Bezak, will introduce. As you know very well, the profession of medical physicist is not as that old and is not as established as doctors, nurses, lawyers, or engineers. And therefore, medical physics profession has to take more pain and more efforts to establish our very, very challenging profession. And to do this, we need dynamic leadership. Leaders cannot be imported from anywhere else or they cannot come from Mars or Moon. And we have to give a room. We have to have among ourselves the leaders who can take forward this very challenging, very interesting uh, job of clinical medical physicists to more higher steps. I enjoyed this uh, medical physicist job, though every job has got its limitations or the situation may not be conducive. The sky is not blue everywhere. The same with the medical physicist, but we could put little more extra efforts and to increase the visibility, this kind of programs are arranged. And we chose these two topics, not just routine technical topic, to nurture among the young generation the leadership qualities and other gamuts and aspects of the medical physicist. Today's moderator of this webinar is Professor Eva Bezak, and she is a professor of medical radiation at University of South Australia, Adelaide. Not only she is academically very active, she has published and co-authored a book on biomedical physics in radiotherapy for cancers and many publications in radiovirus and medical physics. At the same time, professionally, she is very active. She is the vice president of our AFOM Association and also the chair of awards and honors committee. In addition, that she is a secretary general of the IOMP. With this short introduction, I hand over the floor to Eva Bezak to conduct the webinar further. And I once again welcome you all to this webinar. Now, Eva Bezak, it's your floor. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Good afternoon. Good day good morning everyone and i'm very happy to see so many participants on this excellent uh, occasion celebrating the international week of medical physics a couple of housekeeping rules before i start please keep your audios and videos muted so that we can limit the bandwidth and therefore the presentation can be delivered uninterruptedly second feel free to send your greetings and most importantly send your questions via the chat option in Zoom. I will be collecting your questions and then we'll be moderating the discussion at the end of presentation. But without much talking, 
I would like to introduce Professor Kwan Unji to deliver a lecture on nurturing future generations of medical physics leaders. As was described previously, medical physicists have played a major role in the development of new technologies that have revolutionized the way medicine is practiced today. But the question remains, how do we educate the next generation of medical physicists and future-proof them when current emphasis tends to only enhance specific skill development and competency at the expense of future roles and opportunities? We need to always be careful that we need to update curriculums, embracing contemporary sciences, including biology, nanotechnology, advanced materials, bioinformatics. And we also need to develop soft skills of the future leaders, as these are essential to enable the next generation to work or lead effectively as part of a collaborative multidisciplinary team. With the right approach, the next generation can confidently look forward to making continued and significant contributions to the new world medicine. Uh, perhaps Professor Kwan does not need much interaction, introduction because he's very well known in the AFOM region. I would like just to emphasize that he's a professor at the Department of Biomedical Imaging, University of Malaya in Malaysia. And he has done in extensive research contribution in breast imaging, radiological protection, radiation dosimetry, medical physics education, and many others. As a matter of fact, I am often asking, is there anything left that Professor Kwan has not been involved over the years? Uh, he has co-authored over 250 papers in peer-reviewed journals, and has served in the editorial board and advisory boards of more than 12 journals. In the recognition of his immense service to the medical physics community, in 2013, Professor NG was honored as one of the top 50 medical physicists in the world by the IOMP. And in June 2018, he received prestigious IOMP Mari Sklodowska Kiri Award at the World Congress 2018 in Prague. I have known Professor Kwan for many years, and to me, most importantly, he's also a very humble human being despite his immense achievements. And he's always thinking how to serve the community, how to serve the next generation of medical physicists, and how to contribute to our society as a whole. So without much more talking, I'm handing it over to Professor Kwan. Thank you very much, uh, Eva. Thanks for the kind introduction. Good day uh, to all who are with us this afternoon or this evening or this morning. Uh, I'm very privileged to be invited by the AFORM president, Professor Arun Chugali, uh, to give this webinar. And I've chosen this topic on nurturing future generations of medical physics leaders, a topic which is very close to my heart. So let's begin. Okay, so um, nurturing future generations of medical physics leaders. And we know that medical physicists has been serving as a bridge linking physics and medicine. And we are this important bridge. We are scientists and we link with the medical world. And we are both a profession and science, which is unique. We are a recognized health profession. We serve in the hospital, so most of us, but we also do research. We publish papers. We are scientists ourselves, scientists in medicine. 
and that is important. And we need to develop this, uh, the both profession and science. And whatever we do, the underlying practice is most of us do teach. We teach radiologists, oncologists, uh, radiographers, of course, medical physicists as well. And some of us in the senior positions, we do administration as well. Uh, this is unavoidable. And we know that we have been playing a very important role in the development of new technologies. So we think about all those advances uh, in uh, radio therapy equipment, in MRI, CT scanners, and all those. We do have a part in the development of it, uh, even in the early days in the invention of many of such medical equipment. So all this enable us to help to improve the quality of life uh, for the patients. It's interesting, many of our trainings or students often ask, what is my future? Because in today's uh, uncertain world, very competitive, the healthcare industry is undergoing lots of changes. Obviously, this is the question they ask, what is my future? And about 12 years ago, I wrote an editorial for the Australia lessons physical science and engineering, uh, physical, physics and engineering science and medicine on medical physics in 2020. Will we still be relevant? And this year, 2020, indeed, we have proven to be relevant. But there are a number of unfulfilled areas. That's why I like to bring this up uh, in this talk. And January, this year, I wrote an invited article for the A4 newsletter. It's interesting. It's about, are we still relevant? And we want to change. And I have taken from uh, Spencer Johnson's book, Who Moved My Cheese? Some of you may have read this book. It's very popular amongst there uh, are those in the business, in the management. It says movement in a new direction is looking for a chief to be a career, professional ambition. So we need to find new ways to look for that. Look at this mouse is climbing up the pole of chief. So that is the message I want to bring in healthcare. We are talking about molecular uh, imaging. Everything is based on molecular and also artificial intelligence is a buzzword today. And are we prepared for these new technologies? And many things that are with us like nanotechnology, molecular biology, and preclinical imaging, optical imaging, bioinformatics, and data analytics, and so many. So are we ready for those newer technologies? They are here to stay. And now the landscape is changing over the last couple of uh, decades, I must say, because of the financial and political pressure, the constraint. So most hospitals will want to optimize the resources that we have. So we are not employing more physicists and the existing physicists are asked to do, uh, take out more tasks. It's quite a burden on them. And so much so that those who are in the hospital service, they don't have much chance to do research. So that has raised a, a very serious concern if our next generation would be able to have time to innovate and lead in the development of new technologies. And now, medical physics by itself is multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. And this gives us the advantage. And even moving on to cross-disciplinary, to work with other disciplines in medicine, in sciences. And that is our age. So let us take advantage of that. So how do we future-proof the next generation? Make sure that not only they're employable, but they are relevant, they are useful to the healthcare and to the society. 
we can liken this to a, a small plant that uh, we, we are nurturing them and we have the sunshine, the rainfall and fertilizer in a way to help them to grow to be a healthy plant, healthy tree. And this is what we're trying to do. Now I'd like to bring what our late John Cameron said, if anything is worth doing, it is worth doing it badly. Uh, Professor John Cameron from East of Wisconsin. I spent two years with him, I learned a lot. Uh, he was citing G.K. Chesterton. What did he mean? Now basically, it doesn't have to be perfect, just get it to work. And many have the tendency to wait. Oh, I need to perfect my technique. I need to perfect my protocol before I can publish it, before I can tell people. And no, it's not necessary. And that itself has spurred many of his students and others to just do it. Right? Don't worry about perfection, the fine tuning, right? That will come much later. Just like we are writing a computer code. It works, it's okay. Uh, you can then spend time to fine tune, make it uh, faster, uh, compress the code. But the important thing is just do it. So with that spirit in mind, let's just look at a few areas how we can nurture the future generation of medical physics leaders. A lot based on my experience, also learned from many pioneers and Mahagurus that uh, have helped me tremendously. Reform education curriculum. We hear this word curriculum a lot. Now, what does it mean? It's from the Latin career to, to run, look at the arena, the running. And it is today, it means it's instructional education program where the pupils achieve the goals, the ideas and aspiration of life, really, the curriculum. So it means like we are running on the long journey. Our life is really a journey, isn't it? A course, the curriculum preparing us for the lifelong journey, be it a profession, a career, and our ideal in life. And traditionally, we have this uh, IAEA document, Postgraduate Medical Physics Academic Program, which is actually um, endorsed by the IOMP. Uh, many medical physics postgrad programs are based on this. I'll just show you the summary. We see that the traditional subjects or courses, we know very well the physics, dosimetry, protection, imaging therapy, and there is one that only 5% of the overall weightage, advanced subject or additional topics. And this is where we try to squeeze in as much as possible all these advanced topics that we just talked about, molecular biology, uh, nanotechnology, and so on. So our curriculum, in fact, is extremely tight. We have a lot of uh, modules for theories, for practical and clinical uh, attachment. And that isn't an ideal situation. Uh, so we will try to embrace the contemporary sciences, which molecular biology is really the in thing, and we also have system biology, nanotechnology, advanced materials, biomimetics, data analytics that includes like uh, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, and so on. So it is a Hercules task to try to bring in things. We are not trying to master all this, it's just impossible with a limited time, but just to have some understanding uh, of those uh, subjects itself. For example, uh, in the ASEAN College of Medical Physics, which I founded about 10 years ago, we have started a series of tutorials and CPD. We have Molecular Biology 101 for Physicists. It's taught by a biologist. We also have an education specialist uh, giving tutorial on how to be an effective teacher. So this is the way how we can slowly uh, learn all these new subjects. Uh, in future, we are thinking about the A form, can run tutorials, CPD on artificial intelligence, radiomics, 
in molecular biology 102, the more intermediate level, and clinical trials. Uh, we heard from uh, or trials uh, from Thomas Crone uh, on uh, Monday at this important which medical physicists get involved with. And also, it's important to play an active and meaningful role in a society, uh, knowing that our role is healthcare, but it can extend to the society. So it's good that we acquire some knowledge in sociology, humanity, history, economy, and so on. And somehow or another, our work will be extending to different parts of the society as well. So that will mean there's this interplay uh, between physics and society. Right? And we find that in the past, many great physicists, Albert Einstein and many others, they also play a very important role in the society, influencing the development of science, technology uh, in society, advising the government uh, as well. So uh, this cartoon shows that this is a uh, future generation of medical physics leader. Um, who am I? Good question. With so many things to master, such a heavy responsibility. It's loaded. And that is interesting. Next, we look at collaborate with other specialties. And we want to discuss and engage and work with other like material science and so on. Even science and engineering, chemistry, biology, mathematics, computer science. Uh, for those of us who work in the healthcare and hospitals, uh, we are all stationed in radiology, nuclear medicine, or radiation oncology. Have we extended to interact with our colleagues in surgery, cardiology, neurology, and so on? And when's the last time that we have a cup of tea with them, talk to them what we do and how we could work with them, to collaborate with them. Really, the, the physics is applicable to different branches of medicine. No doubt the call is still radiology, nuclear medicine, and oncology, but can extend to others as well. And how about arts and humanity as well? Often, they would want to understand what is the role of physics in society. So it is our duty to explain to them as well. So we want to go beyond our own discipline. You know, often the medical physics, those in oncology, radiotherapy, we are at the basement, lock us down the room, treatment planning, or we do QC. We hardly interact with other people. We also we talk among ourselves, go for a meeting. So why not expand to the others so that we become relevant to them? And this cross fertilization is, is very, very important, uh, which often will you innovative, innovative ideas. You can see that a lot of, when you talk to a colleague, oh, there's a need for this, we will come up with new ideas and we go for new research asking for funding and publish some good work and benefit the patient. And this is the way to go. Let me show you, this is a network map. It's quite interesting. Look at different science discipline. The physics is the bottom right, it's right at the corner, the blue color. And then at the different branches, the cognitive science, the chemistry, biology, and you have uh, health and social issues, business, all those. And these are all connected. You can see that uh, the physics need to play a much more prominent role, uh, its role in different aspects of health care, and see how it can be connected and networked to different disciplines. But uh, there's still a role, but we'd like to see its role to be enhanced uh, further. Look at this uh, diagram I've shown a couple of times before. Uh, there are a lot of breakthrough. Uh, in nanotechnology, material science, non-practic services for healthcare, uh, to tackle issues on cancer and decision support, 
of course, today we have the infectious disease as well. And the right column, next generation healthcare, and this is where we come in. We and our future generation, the proactive healthcare we talk about is precision medicine, personalized medicine, and molecules, whether it's large or small. We talk about so much understanding the molecules, the DNA itself, all these, the virus, all, all these are the molecular structure. So we need going to the advanced chemistry, biology, is unavoidable. And those of us work with pets, develop new radiopharmaceuticals, there's so much of biology, so much of chemistry involved. And of course, remote access, talk about the internet, the uh, telemedicine as well. So this is how healthcare is moving, how it is advancing. Now, if we don't keep up, we'll be lacking far behind. And this is a diagram I've shown a couple of times in my talk. You see how physics and engineering or uh, medicine is at the core and this peripheral. You see a molecular biology, nanotech uh, system biology, drug discovery is one. We're involved a lot in PET, uh, intelligence system, in artificial intelligence, spectroscopy, uh, in optical uh, sciences as well. So there are lot, lots of things. Uh, you can see we can expand and don't just keep to the core and constrain ourselves. And that is interesting uh, paper editorial by um, previous LOMP president, uh, Professor Slavik Tabakov on systems medicine. Interesting is collaboration between medical physicists and biomedical engineers. And basically it looks at the anatomical structures, the function and integrate interaction with biochemical, with electrophysiological, and also our environment. Essentially, it is the mathematical modeling uh, is the core behind this system medicine. And he encourages us to move into the area. Right now, there are very few of us working in systems medicine. So I've just given you uh, some idea of uh, how we can advance. So, don't throw away your knowledge of quantum mechanics, optics, solistic physics, and physics yet. Okay. And that is uh, important. So next one is develop soft skills. There are a lot of people talk about even, uh, unfortunately, medical physicists uh, in our training, we are not trained in that, uh, in a positive, proactive attitude, uh, interpersonal skills, how to communicate with each other, uh, time management, uh, conflict resolution, workplace, uh, teamwork, which is very important, working with ourselves, with our team in the department, in the hospital, self motivation, and many more. And this is something that we really need to look into. Often, the comments I hear from the clinicians is the physicists are very timid, they uh, don't talk, they don't interact with others. Right? So, that is something we need to look into. That. So, when we develop the soft skill, are we able to participate in intelligent discussion with our colleagues? It's important. Right? Active with them, go for a hospital conference to share with them, learn from them, and that is important. So we know that we are relevant, that we exist, we are an important partner in the healthcare. So are we still relevant and contribute meaningfully to the healthcare society? And that is important. And today, in the, the midst of a uh, pandemic, and many of us could also play our role uh, in uh, healthcare, in extending our role in helping uh, different parts in this battle against uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Lastly, communicate, communicate, communicate. I can't overemphasize the effective communication is important, verbal and written as well. Right? We need to communicate, to write grants, communicate uh, to our colleagues, write scientific journal, papers. The students have to learn and also writing reports as well. These are very important and verbal communication important. And today, we take advantage of social media, we communicate to a wider audience, uh, different way. In science communication, it's, it's so important to fight against a lot of fake news, fake information that, and engage with the public. 
Like for example, here you have uh, a colleague, Tanjung from uh, Nepal, is talking to the public even on uh, making most of uranium about the role of nuclear science in society. And uh, I also have been very active in uh, communication of public. On the left, you see uh, the Chinese newspaper heading about telecommunication, mobile communication uh, in health, and also newspaper articles about uh, medical physics applying uh, to healthcare. And there are many things we can involve with uh, communicate with the public, let them know who we are, what we do. And lastly, leadership and mentoring. We need leaders. Now, many of you here participating, they're young, not so young, they're energetic, they're dedicated, they're passionate about profession, and you are the important leaders to enable the future. We also need mentors, uh, those of us who are a uh, bit more senior, more experienced, to guide, to inspire, and to nurture you. And that is so important. I've encountered many such ones throughout my 30 years of environment uh, in different countries, from Latin America uh, to Asia, and uh, to Africa and Europe. And they have inspired me tremendously uh, so I have decided to start in 2017 this international mentoring and leadership program. Uh, on top, uh, you see, uh, of course, recognize uh, Eva Bizarre and Thomas Krohn. And also beside me, you have uh, Robert Jurej from University of Wisconsin, US. So this has helped me to get it started. And later, we invited various uh, mentors as well uh, from uh, like the junior subject from the IADA and uh, the various uh, leaders in medical physics. And I encourage you, those of you interested to join us in providing the mentoring, contact me. In the bottom are the 12 pioneer mentees uh, from Brazil, Peru, down to Indonesia, and then to Hong Kong, and to uh, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Cambodia, and Vietnam some of the newer ones not shown here. Uh, they, they have a variety of background, culture, some are still studying bachelor, completing the master, PhD. Uh, just, Jocelyn was the one who uh, helped me a lot. He saw like a, a leader among the leaders and this is what uh, she commented, how she found this beneficial uh, in uh, research to become a competent scientist prepared for the challenges of academic life uh, it was in Brazil. And then uh, Ng Hao in Malaysia, he was studying his PhD in uh, UK, with Alan Perkins and the nuclear medicine. So he found useful with this real-time support uh, because our mentees could uh, write to us. And we run uh, our regular Skype meetings with our mentors, giving them advice and they ask questions. And this is a continuous process. So we have been very successful with that. Uh, and we constantly are looking out for those young ones who are interested to become mentees. So do contact me. And one of the first uh, collaborative effort among <laughs> the women in the group, they wrote a paper for MPI, Women in Physics Pioneers Who Inspire Us. It was published a year ago, it's quite interesting uh, project they do. So this encourage them to be proactive and to, to empower to do. So that is the uh, international mentoring uh, and leadership program, which uh, I encourage you all to participate, either as mentor or as a mentee. The final part I'll show with you is AAPM. Uh, in 2018, they came up with Medical Physics 3.0, Physics for Every Patient. And essentially, what they listed there is very much like what I shared with you about curriculum reform, collaboration, embracing new knowledge, and also developing of soft skills. Uh, it's a trend now, people going for this. I wouldn't be surprised, Medical Physics 4.0 is on the work now, but 
for many of us, we are still on medical physics 2.0. Anyway, that is interesting. So with the, the right approach, the next generation, young, not so young, you can confidently look forward to making continued and significant contribution to the new world medicine. Right? And we are facing a new world now, so-called the post-normal society, but also this new world medicine. So we can contribute in various ways. In fact, the global health is challenging, right? uh, not only in our core competency in imaging therapy, but uh, also in other ways. So we need to depend on our ingenuity right? in physics. They're very innovative. We've been trained to be analytical, use our imagination, and we're also very versatile. And curiosity is important. Can you imagine the physics range from right from the smallest atom, sub-atom to Higgs boson, right to the biggest cosmology, the black hole, and all the superstar, supernova. Now you can see it is a whole range of uh, orders of magnitudes that we have covered. And that put us in a, a very a unique uh, position to contribute to the advances uh, in healthcare, also to the society. So come back to liken to this young plant we are growing, growing to a, a bigger plant and eventually to a forest of trees, strong trees. And only with uh, the appropriate sunshine, rainfall, and fertilizer, the loving care to help with that. So who am I, right? <laughs> you may ask. We know where we are, we know our future. So for the future, I'd like to quote the little prince, uh, Antoine Song Asprey says, as for the future, the task is not to foresee, but to enable it. So you are the enablers of it. You make it happen. You just do it. And that is the main message, the take home point I want to live with you. So to achieve more, we should imagine together and change. Huh? Change to us a better, change accordingly. We know the world is changing, so we need to change in our attitude, in our knowledge, and of course, with this growing in the wisdom, we will be the bright next generations of medical physics leaders. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will clap on behalf of everyone else uh, because everyone <laughs> else is muted. Uh, I'll stop thank the you. Share. Uh, you can stop share. Yes, you can stop sharing. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentations, and I will kickstart the discussion. Juan, with so much pressure on medical physicists to master so many skills physics, technical, as well as soft skills. Uh, will they become super scientists if they have to be masters of all these skills? Mm, that is a, a worry. It's a, my concern as well. Uh, it, there's tremendous pressure upon us to master so many things. If you want to communicate, for example, the oncologists, they talk about all the molecular medicine, Right, and uh, all the oncogene. So, in order to communicate intelligent with them, we need to learn the basic of molecular biology. And to me, there isn't much choice. So, I guess we just have to bite the bullets and just get on with that. Uh, but we need to have uh, like a form kind of a systematic way to organize CPD uh, tutorials to take us uh, both young and old to all these new uh, areas that we need to know, to equip ourselves with. So, uh, super scientists, probably, <laughs> yes, maybe. Yeah. Uh, what is your suggestion for medical physicists working in local and middle income countries with limited resources to master skills and become leaders and innovators? Yeah. Uh, the lower income countries may not have all this sophisticated equipment like we do have. Uh, nonetheless, the basic skills is important. The safety, you know, I failed to mention in my talk, we ensure patient safety. 
and they can use their knowledge of physics and uh, engineering to be applied to ensure safety uh, in radiation medicine. Uh, also advise the doctors, uh, the allied health science people, uh, the practice important of the safety and also even improvise uh, many uh, techniques to help them uh, in overcome various problems and difficulties. Mm -hmm. Do you see that AFOM has a role perhaps assisting in education of all physicists and especially those in low and middle income countries that have made difficulties to re access resources and even leadership training? Yeah, uh, over the past 20 years, I have seen AFOM has been steadily uh, helping through our annual congress in various workshops, uh, tutorial sessions on uh, CPD, education training, and we also have been collaborating with uh, agencies like IAEA and others to help to bring up to speed uh, to train many of our colleagues in the lower income countries. And I see uh, a form is continuing to do that. Uh, perhaps I may say there's an increasing pace as well. Uh, the current leadership has been excellent in doing that. Now, young physicists are always shy and may feel a bit inferior. Do you have any advice how to overcome that feeling of shyness and inferiority? No, that is understandable. In a hospital hierarchy, right, the medical doctors are really, they, they run the show in top management position. After all, they are responsible clinically, even legally uh, for the patient, for their welfare. And we work under them, we work with them. We need to understand this is a hierarchy. And well, after knowing them, you find that they are just like us, they are humans. They have their fear, they have the emotion, they have the tempo. So uh, get to know them. And what I did in my early days, uh, I slowly start having tea with them, join the functions, get to know them uh, socially, and find you get used to that and become good friends. And later, collaborators. I have great collaboration with lots of them, the cardiologists, neurologists, uh, pediatricians, and so many of them. Uh, you find that it's very enjoyable. You enjoy that a lot. You contribute. At the end, right, you can sleep well. You know that, oh, you help eventually our patients. I have a question more slightly off topic. Do you see the use of medical physics even in cosmetic applications? Cosmetic. I think they use lasers more yeah, and yeah. more. Yeah. That is where I think in most countries, we don't have regulation on the use of non-ionizing radiation. And this is That's really true. needed. You see, they, they use uh, the laser and do a lot of detrimental effects. And also use like ultrasound to yes. uh, reduce weight, which is uh, destroy the fat in the body. Yeah, and they, they do know yeah. the, the amount, the intensity of ultrasound. And that has caused lots of... Uh, harm to the patient and yeah this yes. is a neglected area we should look into that yeah. thanks for planning salons as well they can result in a skin cancer development yeah that's right yeah. They, they use this infrared for yeah. sun tan <laughs> yeah uh, do in, you think we need international collaboration an example is IMPCB to assist countries to achieve certification standard for medical physics profession? Yes, uh, since in our region, we don't have uh, our regional certification program, unlike those uh, like in US. So the IMPCP will be an excellent uh, medium or the agent to certify the certification is important. In the medical world, the doctors are certified, right? they are accredited or certified to practice. They uh, take on the responsibility, uh, the liability as well. So without that, our professional status will not 
be as good, I wouldn't say at same level as the medical profession. So that is a good. And uh, in the region, we're so few of us who are clinically uh, accredited or qualified or certified. And there are very few. So we need to enhance that. We need to accelerate this uh, certification process. Mm -hmm. I'm reading an excellent comment who is very appreciative of your lecture, Professor Kwan. But one of the things that maybe we as medical physicists have that uh, we are not good at marketing. So many people don't necessarily know who medical physicists are. And maybe we should be also proactive in regards to the public to understand the role of medical physicists. What do you think about that? Yeah, um, we have started with this like uh, the International Day of Medical Physics. I, I noticed most of the time we uh, share amongst ourselves. We are like preaching to the converted. So we yes, need to preach to the outer people. So uh, to think of a different strategy, right? To take up uh, newspaper space, uh, YouTube, uh, to make use of social media to publicize ourselves, even television channels and so on. We really need to promote ourselves. Very often, uh, most of them will know who are the medical physicists? What do we do in the hospital? Um, most of the doctors don't know, only the few whom we work with. So we need really to accelerate in this uh, to uh, make the public to understand what we do, what we are. Mm -hmm. I have a question here on artificial intelligence. Uh, what is your stand regarding proposed use of AI in future application of medical physics? How significant would it be for the future generation of medical physicists? AI is here to stay, but Absolutely. its impact is yet to be seen. It's, it's a hype. Every day we hear, we read papers about how it helps in the improving diagnosis, or even like the COVID-19, the CT scan, uh, improving the diagnosis. Uh, and every aspect of healthcare and even in the everyday life. So uh, we need to assess. And it is important that medical physicists should play a, a more important role. Often the images they use for testing, they are then undergo a proper standardization, a different image quality will have different effect on that. So we should be involved in the standardization in the quality control of images beforehand for testing. Even in ray therapy as well, uh, there's a lack of standardization. Uh, and this is, I see how we can play an important role. But before that, all of us will need to go for the basic uh, AI 101 to, to understand yeah. what it is so that it can play an important role. And moreover, in the hospital, we are the uh, numeric literate ones, right? We are the quantitative scientists. We you know uh, math, statistics, computing. So doctors will tend to ask us for advice. And AI has been introduced in some way in radiology, and oncology, nuclear medicine. So we have to know. Otherwise, our clinician doctors will look for computer scientists to help them. And then our role will be diminished. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, well said. Uh, Eva, uh, could we ask this uh, mentee? Uh, Yes, do we have any mentees available? Are any men? Yes. Feel free to jump in and tell us about your experience, Leia. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Leia. I'm, I'm based in Malaysia, and I'm one of the mentees from the International Mentoring and Leadership uh, Program that Prof. Hung has um, organized. Um, the, I was invited in like late uh, 2018 around October to join and I wasn't really sure what I was to expect I just finished my master's at that point and I wasn't yeah I wasn't quite sure what to expect actually and I think it's it's been a very worthwhile experience being on the program um, firstly it's very diverse I've never had so many friends from all, all over the world and it's quite um, it's it's very interesting to see everyone's perspective on 
uh, a single topic and how enriching it is. Um, for instance, articles are, have been shared uh, over the last few weeks on COVID-19 and how medical physicists um, can apply can apply what they can do to help. And uh, many people, like for instance, from Prof. Jocelyn from Brazil, um, Louise and Prof. Ng have been sharing a lot of articles of late and many contributors, in fact, in the group. So that was one um, great thing that it's like, it's a very unifying factor that there's so many people involved in the group. Um, apart from that as well, um, what the one salient feature I also uh, enjoyed from the group is the fact that uh, every Skype call, uh, we there's a professor that's invited to speak about their research and also um, about their experiences and how what they encountered. Um, my first talk was with um, Dr. John Boone from UC Davis, and I remember him talking about his his research uh, and on mammography, but also um, his, his ups and downs in getting to where he is. And I think for me, that was a very uh, refreshing approach because uh, it, it showed like, you know, I'm not in this alone. Um, I can agree with Prof. Hung when he said that sometimes soft skills get lost along the way. At least I know personally on my end, uh, that, can be, that can be something that I've experienced. Uh, and I think that's what um, hearing from uh, Dr. Boon about how, uh, like what we could brush up on what we could improve on. He gives us his experience of what he, what mistakes he's made and how he's rectified it. It's very refreshing and it's very relevant, I think, and it helps from day to day. Um, and I think the, the best thing for me as well is the fact that I, I was able to organize a call. Um, you, the thing about the group is it's very informal and it's very friendly. Everyone's very friendly. Everyone's very cooperating. Um, and that, that it's a very fostering environment. So uh, I was able uh, to organize a call uh, to liaise with Dr. Virginia Sapaki from Greece. And, um, and I was also, um, I had also like a mentor amongst the mentee, which is Prof. Jocelyn, uh, in advising how to get, like how to organize this online. Because it's one thing to organize an event physically, it's another to organize one thing online and getting everyone together uh, or, you know, consolidating with like the time zones and things like that. So for me, the I, I find that, um, because it's true, like medical physics is not a very, it's not the so popular that I have to find, I always find myself explaining what a medical physicist does. And so it can be a very lonely journey sometimes. And so it's very, it's nice to have this group where it's fostering and it's, it and it's such an open way to teach about leadership, which is, I think, very important. So that was my experience with the program. Thanks. Oh, fantastic. Well done. Do we have any other mentees or anyone from any other country who has been mentored along their way to becoming a medical physicist or a leader in medical physics? Rajni, what was your experience so far? Yes, mute. Okay. I have not um, formally attended any kind of thing uh, uh, pertaining to this uh, leadership kind of a thing, but I'm planning to do it because uh, I feel like in medical physics, uh, just academic things are not going to uh, make you visible in the, uh, uh, in, in the world of uh, healthcare. You need to have some kind of administrative skills or some kind of uh, uh, other skills of being socialized and being uh, being able to uh, show your work so that uh, everyone can hear you. So I think it's a good approach and we should encourage youngsters to go for this kind of a leadership uh, programs. It will definitely give them a very good approach to or, 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 or a kind of a guidance that how they can uh, lead their uh, pathway to be, to be in main uh, view in the healthcare. Thank you so much. Chai Hong, did you have any experience with mentoring and leadership training? Um, hi, um, Eva. Eva. Yes. Um, did you expect to talk? <laughs> Well, well, I appreciate uh, Prof. Quant very much. 
I think he is my great mentor. He is the one, the first one who really gave me opportunity to learn and grow. And he, I think he teach by showing the examples. So he played the, the role and show us how should we uh, get to be more professional and get to be more confident in what we are doing. And he also shared his uh, international network, which he is very strong in networking. So he always uh, introduced us to the renowned physicists in the world. And that really opened up our network. And it's a great help actually. So I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Professor Kwan, thank you, Chai Hong. How do people, how young physicists can they join your mentorship group? Uh, okay, um, why not? Just drop me a line, just send me an email. And uh, when uh, we're going to have a next session quite soon, uh, going to be uh, our invited mentor will be Professor Slavik Tabakov, our previous president of IOMP. So excited. So uh, we will uh, announce that uh, we have been using Skype for the last three years, very stable. You can just join us and see whether you like it or not and if so well you're welcome to join us right uh, it's informal meeting there's no uh a couple of us how much is the annual fees there's no fees at all <laughs> it's free for all so it's very much a labor of love uh i would say that way so uh yeah send me an email It'd be good we are expanding that uh, program and, and uh, just, even yeah. the, the Americans, they are trying to do that as well, mentoring program. But yeah. there is a more uh, structured way, a slightly a bit more commercial way. It's quite a different nature from what we are doing. Are there mentoring programs for not so young physicists to join? Is there a group for the middle career researchers? Uh, not sure yet. <laughs> Might be they could join as well. No, no harm. And very soon, the mid-level, they can even share the experience and just jump to the senior level right, to be a mentor. Yeah, this is I long. agree with that. That sort of at the different levels of career progression, people may need mm -hmm. different type of mentoring to progress to the next level. Yeah. Now, thank you, Professor Kwan, very much. I will hand over at this stage to uh, President Aaron Chogle to make some concluding remarks. Okay. Uh, let's say a few words before that. Uh, thank you very much for all who have participated and who asked questions. And I thank Prof. Arun once again for inviting me. And God bless you all. Keep safe. Thank you. Before formally thanking the speaker and the moderator, uh, dear participant, there were some concerns raised about inferiority complex or this thing. Yes, we medical physicists are in minority in a healthcare where you work, but it is by your knowledge, your skill as a problem solver and not as a competing, but complementary and helping not just doing your job of maybe planning or radiation safety, you can get involved maybe into cancer societies, telemedicine, or any kind of work the hospital can do additional efforts. Thereby, you can increase your visibility, your role, your importance. Yes, you are important and you are an added advantage to the institution. Yes definitely you will not feel inferiority complex. And as I earlier told that we are, yes, a minor group and started our career maybe 50, 60 years back medical physics. And that is the reason we have started IDMP and IMPW to increase the visibility. And that every one of you should use this opportunity. You can write some article, some uh, lectures in your institution regarding what do medical physicists do in a local language, in the newspaper, something that will increase the visibility.
that is you how to come out of your shell and the comfort zone and work definitely i have also gone through the stage what youngsters are going through definitely it will work and the some questions from chai hong was there certification of medical physicians yes i am pcw is a certification board it is certifying the certified boards and every country should have the own certification boards in addition iompp has a started a program of accreditation of medical physics education program as well as the residency program and cpd program now some questions were there also regarding the curriculum and regarding the tcs 56 yes iompp is a main body we are the regional organization as i form is working on this aspect with the i and all and this all whatever new development and new requirement and new curriculum has to be added it is being worked on that will come and also as i told you iaea and iompp and who are working how registration certification of medical physics program should happen and it will come up definitely so always i will say to increase the visibility in your importance you have to come out of your comfort zone and the cell and contribute as much as you can you are a medical physicist you are a multifaceted person definitely definitely you can do today's speaker professor con ng is not just speaking as a, a maybe a speaker he has founded this afform he was the man behind this what we are celebrating 20 years of afform the great contribution to this profession in this region not only he is a instrumental in founding this afform also siform and that is the reason he is very active not just confined to the field of just medical physics biomedical and all things and that initially he has said that you have to uh, collaborate you have to work with other maybe radiologists or radiology oncologists biomedical engineers and to show your importance that is he has done it and that is what a lot of accolades and awards he has got and he was uh, the professor kionari inamura afom memorial awardee last year for 2019 and as you know we have to organize lot of activities maybe a small workshop maybe seminar to make the visibility and utility and all those things with this word again i want that you all should come out afom has a website afom has a newsletter communicate send articles what are the things you are facing in your country what's need to be done communication is the best way to go ahead i again appeal unfortunately sometimes it becomes a one way traffic and people do not come they think okay i have done my job of medical what is there that's enough that is not enough so with this remarks today's and 11th topics were very important i thank from my base of the heart professor pon ng for the work he has done for the professional development in asia oceania region and also mentoring he has done i know him for last many years the topic he covered he answered was excellent by his experience he lead from the front and he is a true leader i have seen so thank you professor pon for doing the wonderful job i thank professor eva bezak and always i feel that 24 hours every everybody's day is only of 24 hours nobody has extra time but i see people like eva and uh, many people they do so much of output and so much of work where from they get the energy and these things many a times i spend so much of time and read and try to communicate and feel at the end oh i i still do not know many thing
so that is the way how you use your time in a constructive manner and give the output in a variety of field she is not only the vice president asc chair this the secretary general not lot of ngos she has done so thank you eva for contributing and uh, uh, the moderating this session so i thank all the participants the speaker of the today professor kon whom ng dr eva bezak moderator rajni and that is what mentoring see i i was alone in the department 20 years back but we started developing getting people getting post it's not a easy thing and that is how uh, rajni is here uh, join my department and tried we should give the space to youngsters to come up they have a lot of potential they have a lot of that what we need is to mentor them and that you youngsters use your potential use your energy for a focused way to bring up and again i will tell you leaders are not going to come from anywhere from the outside the universe you only will be the future leader please use this opportunity do this thing once again i thank all the participant speaker moderator and this things and wish you once again happy international medical physics week and we are celebrating 20th anniversary of apom your active participation two way communication i again appeal do these things with this thing i thank everybody and hand over the floor to rajni verma she has taken a see these are youngsters we are not aware of much of the technologies but i asked her and she did it and how we are in there may be some shortcoming there may be some lacunas but beginning we have done we want to be forward and again i tell as uh, our ex president of india professor abdul kalam who was a great scientist he said if i have committed any mistake i have some shortcoming please tell me because i am to rectify i am to correct if you tell me you are my friend if you tell somebody it's not going to happen so if we have to do something more please give us the feedback we will try to do we are humans yes we have some shortcoming we may be committing some mistake please do communicate with this again i hand over to rajini verma thank you very much sir uh, now and uh, today itself i taken liberty to represent the young medical physicist so first of all i want to thank all of you professor kwan ji professor arun professor eva for uh, providing us a kind of a role model uh, to dream much about, all about so and i i especially thank professor kwan ji to provide us information about this uh, mentoring program also i think uh, like me other young medical physicists will be very happy to know about this and uh, i i thanks everybody to uh, for their active participation and joining us and i hope they have enjoyed this uh, very interesting and wonderful session because in every day uh, day to day academic things we don't uh, we don't find an opportunity to have that kind of session so at last i want to wish you a very happy international medical physics week and i wish uh, you to stay safe and stay healthy Thank you so much. Stay connected. Stay safe.